Uh, first one for me, my well, first one of these, I've loved it, I uh, didn't really know what I was putting myself up for this evening, same as many of you I think, but uh, really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to take you through, I'm really passionate about this, doing it in three minutes is going to be hard, but I'm going to have a go. Um, Chiswick School, I've been now in my third year there now, uh, when I started I was the fifth head in six years. They are only starting to believe at the moment that I am going to stay. Um, so the first thing was actually getting people to, to, to actually come on board a little bit because there was genuinely a murmur in the staff room, how long will this one last? Um, a lot of time satisfactory, um, eight years satisfactory and you get used to being satisfactory and actually to go anywhere else people just didn't believe it was going to happen. Um, so we became good and that happened in March this year which was fantastic. Um, people sort of stood back for three or four days, everyone walked a little bit taller, um, it felt great. But then after that there was this massive vacuum because we focused everything at becoming good and nobody had actually thought about what was next, including me, it has to be said. So the next bit was that we decided to get back to basics. There were one or two attempts to hijack it, it has to be said. There were one or two groups that thought, yeah, well, I know where we're going to take the school. We'll take it here or we'll take it there. So I had to fight a few people to actually grab my school back. Um, but uh, we decided that we were going to get back to basics and forget everything. And as Alistair says, get back to the knitting, get back to the bits that were important. So we asked the question of staff, what made me teach in the first place? And it broke down mostly into two categories, either people had inspirational teaching somewhere in their life and wanted to emulate it or, and the exact opposite with me, I don't think I ever met an inspirational teacher at school, they were all pretty rubbish and I didn't want anybody to suffer that in, in, under my watch. We came up with a set of moral drivers, I don't expect you to read them, but, but these are the things that make you come on a cold November morning when you've got a bit of a cold and you don't really fancy it and someone will cover my lesson and it'll be okay. But these were the things that were really important to the staff. And we also included the students in this, by the way, and said to the students, you know, what would make a good school for you? What are the moral drivers for you? And they're the things that we keep coming back to. With all the nonsense that's going on at the moment, those moral drivers are critical. So it's linking that purpose to a strategy. And we had to decide what strategy was. We came up with a corporate document. The document, even that word corporate was, was controversial. We're not corporate, we're a school. Um, well, corporate means everybody, so actually it's a corporate document. <laughs> Three clear strands, making sure that teaching and learning is at the very heart. Creating an ethos, and that's going back to making the kids want to come in. If they don't want to come in, they don't feel safe, they don't want to be there, they won't do well. And the last one for us, because we're in mixed buildings, they're a bit messy in places, is making sure the buildings are fit for, for purpose. And finally, we brought that down to departmental, brought it down to middle management level. The, the middle managers had to go away and had to write a three-year plan of what was outstanding for geography, for English, for science. And you know what? No one had ever asked them to do that before. They'd always been asked to do one-year plans. How will you get the next set of exam results to be better than this one? And I'm going to go before a kangaroo gets chucked at me. 